Welcome to Exotic Ghana UK, Yacht Chris Weekly on another glorious Sunday morning. The UK got its highest temperature, or third highest temperature, ever recorded on Friday, just a couple of days ago. So we had some really extreme heat, but it's been pretty short lived, it's just been over this weekend, and then it's going to get back down to normal to cooler temperatures, because overall July has been a bit of a, a write off, apart from the odd day, because it's been cold pretty much and a lot of rain. But the odd sunny day, it's easy to forget about the cold days. And as I keep mentioning, the last few weeks the plants are loving the combination of rain we've been having and now the sunny days to really get maximum growth in the garden. And you may notice that we've got all this foliage around me. We've got the Musa sicimensis with its red leaves, red and burgundy. We've got the Scent Haniba bananas here, huge palolite leaves. We've got the ginger down here, this is Forestii, which was grow another probably about 60 centimetres to get to be about 2 metres tall and colour absolutely everywhere. So in this episode we're going to be looking at the greenhouse, the original greenhouse and what are the plans for the space now that I've removed it and we're also going to be looking at some of the tender plants and how I've grown them and got them to be planted out and make a feature in the garden. So here's a greenhouse I've had for seven years and moved in, put it in this space and it's taken up quite a lot of prime location in the garden and gets full sun all, all day. So it's time to remove this greenhouse and then use this area for planting. So here's a greenhouse now. And now the greenhouse has been completely removed, just got the electricity supply that probably going to keep there. And it opens up a big space and it exposes the palm trees behind against the fence, the uh, Wagneranus and the Marchanus, Trachycarpus species. And really it's opened up this area. And if we look down the garden this way, we've got a whole new view of this first big tropical bed. Now the greenhouse is gone. We've got the Inseto banana dominating to the right hand side. And you can see all the other plants which have not been viewed from this angle before and I have got obviously plans to use the area that the greenhouse was in for more tropical plantings. And looking back down the garden towards the house, the greenhouse no longer there it means you don't have that modern building jutting out and spoiling the look against all the tropical plants. So removing the greenhouse has exposed the fence and a few of the palms that were going growing behind it. So right down the fence line we have all the different Trachycarpus species that there are in the world all planted out in a line so we can see how they grow and compare their growth year on year with each other and some are hardier than others. Now behind the greenhouse we have two. So we have the Trachycarpus wagnerinus or waggy palm with the deep green leaves, quite small and very stiff, very wind resistant and that now the greenhouse is gone can open up and we can see that to its full glory and by the side of it much lighter green leaves and this is the Trachycarpus marchianus. Now with the marchianus there's a couple of different forms, this is the Nepal form which should be a little bit hardier than the general Marchianus and it's also very closely related to Latissectus as well and this is the tenderest type of Trachyarpus and like I said it's got light green leaves and it's got lots of white fluffy tomatomum on the new emerging leaves on the petioles, these stalks here and it's very different once it gets the trunk which this only got a small sort of starting trunk it looks very distinctive from other Trachyarpus species but like I said it's very tender and because it was behind the greenhouse it was protected really well in winter by the fence and the greenhouse and the heat given off by the greenhouse were protecting this on the coldest nights so I'll have to see how this does in my garden without that protection this winter 
One thing I have noticed is it's not got very good root attachment. So if I just gently sway that in all directions, it, there's not many anchoring roots in there. So what I'm going to do is down at the base, I'm going to actually get some soil and raise it around the base of the trunk and firm that in just to give it a bit of stability. Put a couple of bricks around it so it can't fall over and hopefully over the next year or so it'll re-root around the edges and be a far more stable palm. I mean it's growing well but I don't want it falling over in the wind especially now it's exposed because of the greenhouse not being here. Wonderful palm though and I'm very very happy to have it growing in my garden for six years now when it's said to be very tender and shouldn't really survive up north in the UK. So what are my plans for this area? Well I've got the electricity supply still there and I'll keep that in and that can power various things that I may need powering in this area in the future. But what I'm going to do is extend the tropical bed which we have behind us and build this up, put lots of nice topsoil compost manure in this area, shape the bed curving round and put some of the palm trees that I don't have room for in the rest of the garden in this area. So we've got the Trachyarpus princeps, it's by the Jabea, further down in the garden and I can transplant that and put this in this area. And I've also got my baby little special crosses of jabeas and bootias and they can fit in this area as well. So remember this greenhouse was a six by eight foot greenhouse so not a huge greenhouse but the standard small size that you buy but obviously got the area around it as well that I can use. And then moving around where we've got the sunflowers now and the vegetable bed that is going to be changed over winter as well. So I've got a lot of work to do, a lot of exciting projects to be getting on with, but for the next few months I'm just going to enjoy the summer and the autumn garden and look at all the wonderful colour we have. Two weeks ago we planted this cordyline in divisor and I can happily report it's still alive. There are quite a few types of Fatsia, but this is Fatsia polycarpa, Edwin Needham form, with its very elongated lobes on the leaves, very finely cut. I think it's the most interesting looking type of Fatsia that I'm growing, pretty much in deep shade, a little bit of dappled shade as it is now, but it's mainly in full shade throughout the day. And it seems to be growing pretty well in this very sheltered, shady location. A new addition to the shady part of the garden is this bug hotel which hopefully will be used a lot over winter for overwintering little insects and invertebrate. Now one plant that I wouldn't be without in the tropical garden, the exotic garden, is iricine or blood leaf. It comes in a few different forms and it's a plant that I keep going from year after year by cuttings in autumn overwintered in the propagator or windowsill and then plant it out to make substantial plants by mid to late summer. And we've got two forms of iricine in front of us now. We've got the sort of dark purple and pink form on the right and we've got the green and yellow form on the left. And these have made decent sized plants. So these are about 40 centimeters tall and wide each and these were just from little tiny just barely surviving cuttings that were planted out in the very last few days of May or early June. And I've got about 20-30 of these plants around the garden. Cost me nothing, because I keep them going year after year. And they really are great fillers that add a very good tropical, tropical look to the garden. And combined with the dahlias above and around, and the Spanish flag as well, some really vivid colours in this part of the garden but also right down the borders as well combined with other plants such as the tree ferns and the palm trees. And here we see another form of the iricine with more intense neon pink leaves combined with the Euchromis pineapple lilies which are just about to flower 
and I've also got the purple leaved Eucormis in the background. It's a wonderful plant is the Irisene. Definitely, definitely trying to find this plant and keep it going year on year by cuttings, which I'll show you how to do each year. Dead easy in a jar of water or just in a heated propagator. And you'll be rewarded with amazing foliage throughout the summer and autumn. And it's very easy to look after, never gets any pests, and it doesn't seem to flower or fade away either. Thank you for watching this edition of Exotic Gardening UK. Join me next week where I'll be doing more in the garden. And if you want a t-shirt like this, you can see that on my Facebook page and shop. Some children have been entrepreneurial and designed quite a few t-shirts and face masks and other things exotic related. They'll be adding to it every week on the shop.